Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This is part two of refitting the steam regulator to a large 7.25 inch gauge steam locomotive. So why have I split this into two parts? It's a very simple job really, but the only problem was I was missing these two bolts. A pair of M4 Allen Caphead countersunk bolts. And these two bolts have to be countersunk to allow for the fitting of the two clack valves, one on each side of this assembly. I'm using one of these Allen key things with a handle, and I really must buy some of these. I've been very slack over the years and I've never bothered, but it's much simpler than using a small Allen key. Thinking about it though, I do have one of these in my workshop, but it never seems to fit anything. This is a metric one, and possibly mine is an imperial one or the other way around. With the bolts fitted in place, it's time to fit the clack valves. I'd already put these into the unit to make sure that they fitted properly and were the right way around by using these washers. So in this clip I'm fitting them to the top feed block using some Loctite 542 to seal the threads. That's one side fitted, now to move across to the other side and the same principle, coat the threads in Loctite 542, the washers in place because I've already checked that this part fits before applying the Loctite 542, and now with the help of an adjustable spanner, which sadly is not a barco spanner but it's sort of okay, I'm just tightening the unit into place. And the fit is just right, it tightens up perfectly as I get it into the right position. That's an ideal opportunity to insert a girlfriend joke. I use the word insert in a metaphorical sense. This is really a video about getting this engine ready for a hydraulic test. The engine is an unknown quantity and the first thing to do before proceeding any further is to make sure the boiler's okay. Because if the boiler isn't okay, then you have to have a bit of a rethink as to what you're going to do with it. These two pieces of copper pipe with the unions on are really not very good at all. I would say they need replacing, but for the moment I'm going to put them in position on the top feed clacks. And to do this properly I need to remove the lids from the tanks so I can get my spanner in there to tighten them up because as you can see the pipes are very loose. So in this clip I'm removing the bolts from the top of the tanks. And looking at the state of the paintwork around these bolts I think they've been removed in the past. This is a big problem with miniature steam locomotives. When they're all painted, like the full size, a lot of the bolt heads are painted over. And unfortunately, on a model steam locomotive, when you remove the bolts that are painted over, some of the paint around the bolts comes off with the bolts. And what makes it worse is these side tanks and the tops are made from brass, and paint and brass don't go very well together. And the way that this paintwork is flaking off from the brass would suggest that etch primer hasn't been used. Although it's difficult to say because even with etch primer, paint doesn't stick very well to brass at the best of times. But I'm going to carry on regardless because these tank tops have to be removed and refitted. And while on the subject of paint, there's one other minor problem. The colour of it. This does not look anything like Great Western Railway Green. But as this locomotive has British Railways transfers on the side, I would think maybe this is just British Railways engine green. But this shade of green looks to be a bit on the bright side for that. It doesn't really matter though because I'm not going to be painting this engine. This locomotive has been built from a kit. This is a Winson kit. And as you can see, it's not very well put together. If you look at the inner part of the side tank, where the firebox is, you will notice that the tank side doesn't line up with the tank top. What I had to do with this was put a large screwdriver between the firebox wrapper, and with the screwdriver I persuaded the inner part of the side tank to come into the right position so I could put a bolt in the hole. In this clip I'm removing the right hand side tank, the one at the other side. The bolt at the front closest to the water filler was very difficult to get off. You can't use a socket on it, you have to use a small spanner half a turn at a time. Here I'm tightening the union nut onto the clack valve, and as you can see the pipe is moving at the other end, but by using my adjustable spanner, this is my small barco adjustable spanner, I can also tighten this union, and it's very loose indeed. And even with the top of the side tank moved out of the way, it's still quite tricky to get in the right position to tighten this union nut. I mentioned earlier that it was quite difficult to remove the bolt near the water filler at the front of the side tank, and here it's even more difficult because I'm putting a new bolt in there. I'm doing this job by using a very small socket just to press the bolt down into the hole a little bit, then I just use a small spanner to tighten it up. 
and keen-eyed viewers will notice that this particular bolt has a fractionally smaller head than the other ones, so you can see how close it was originally to the side of the water filler. So now, without further ado, it's time to fill the boiler, and it took quite a while. This is a really large boiler, and it took quite a few of these bottles of water to fill up the boiler. Unfortunately, the first amount of water that went into the boiler went straight through the boiler, out of the blow-down valve which was left open, and onto the floor. So I closed the blow-down valve and used a mop to get rid of the large puddle that had appeared on the floor, and started again with another container full of water. Just a quick common sense observation. This is a plastic funnel that is temporarily screwed into the safety valve hole on the top of the fitting. But to make the water flow into the boiler, I need to ventilate the boiler, so at the moment the regulator is open and so is the steam valve to the injector. It's getting close to the top now because some of the water is starting to run out around the bottom of the funnel. So I think it's time to remove the funnel now and fill the boiler right to the top using a slightly different method. I've connected the hydraulic pump to the fitting, but I've left the union loose. So what I'm doing at the moment is moving the handle and pumping more water into the boiler, and when water starts to squirt out of the loose thread on the fitting, then I know that the boiler's full right to the top. After tightening the water fitting fully, it's time to pump some pressure into the boiler. But there's a bit of a problem. It goes up to 50 psi and tries to go to 100, and when I let go of the handle, all the pressure drains away. So what's going on here? I closed the regulator and I closed the steam valve, because that was an obvious thing that I could have forgotten about, but I'm getting nowhere by pumping this handle, apart from by now my arm's starting to ache. I will give this some thought, because the water is just running out of the cylinders. So meanwhile, in the rest of the steam workshop, Billy is working on this engine. Various little jobs just need finishing off. These are the parts of it on the bench, including a really clever spark arrestor that fits on the petticoat pipe inside the smoke box, and this stops hot ash and small particles of coal from being blown up the chimney and burning the driver and the passengers. And it looks much better than an external one, which I always think looked very ugly. This is a very nice locomotive over by the stairs. Unlike some miniature steam locomotives, to me this really captures the essence of the full size. Unlike this one. Right, I've taken everything off again. When in doubt, start again and do it properly. The wet header on the boiler is not very flat or smooth, and the fitting that holds the wet header in place is not tightening up fully. So further investigation and some modification is necessary. This clip, by the way, shows it in pieces for the third time. So something needs to be remade and refitted. I think a modification is in order. Anyway, I'm not going to do any more today. It's not been the most productive day at the Steam Workshop, but thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.